done this in a long time. So I don't really know what to say. Uh, well, I'll keep it brief because it's fucking cold. And it's just started snowing as well. Today is the 8th of January 2024. Um, <clears throat> in about 12 hours, I will be in the air on the way to Sedona Forest to go find Luke and his beautiful community, which I'm so excited for. I may not sound it, but I am very much so. Um, I just wanted to do this because I haven't done it in a long time and I thought it would be fitting to do it in the same place that I did that one all those years ago and that's on my YouTube channel uh, hopefully this will be the start of some more regular video series blog vlog whatever thing because I want to keep up to date you know on uh, Bax's travels it's gonna be a pretty immense year um, my arms ain't already ready fucking hell um, don't really know what the plan is I have a few destinations in mind that I want to be at on certain dates this year first one after Sedona Forest is Croatia for hospitality on the beach where I'm so excited to meet Ham and, Ham and Sari. Sam and Harry they will drive down hopefully this is the plan uh, and then after that there'll be a gap probably of a couple months before summer base and after that Portugal for Beth's birthday but in the meantime it's sort of up to me, really. Because uh, that's who I'm doing it for. It's me. Obviously. No one else. Despite that, though, it's uh, not a solo mission. I have amazing friends. And an amazing family. So, uh, I won't be away forever. I've said this to multiple people, and if you're watching this, and if I've already told you, then you will know exactly what I mean when I say that some people fuck off to the other side of the world because they have nothing, or they grew up in bad circumstances and want to start a new life, but for me, I have so much at home. I have everything I could need to have a, a beautiful life, which I'm so, so incredibly grateful for. But with that comes the advantage of being in a position where I can't get away and escape the bubble and explore the world see new things, experiences, places, people, new sounds, smells, sights, everything, like it's gonna be maybe overwhelming at some points, you know? Uh, um, but yeah, I'm incredibly excited and I'm probably gonna, no, I'll keep walking, fuck it. Um, I've already had to say goodbye to my mum this morning. That was one of the hardest things I've had to do. I said I wouldn't cry in this video either, which is gonna be quite hard. Uh, not for any reason apart from the fact that, again, I've said this to lots of people, but the people in my life 
are the most important thing. My friends and my family. So it doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing. If I can't share it with those people, then it's not going to be the same. You know, uh, there's lots of going to be lots of things that you know I'm going to experience, which I'll be able to share in full detail because. can with words I suppose for some things but but you know I don't know what I'm trying to say but what I mean is I'll be home because this is where those friends and family are and they're not going to go anywhere um right last words before I pat this up because I don't want to make it super super long to my friends and family. <sighs> you guys are amazing and I wouldn't be, it sounds cliche as fuck, but I wouldn't be who I am without you guys. So uh, without the continued love and support, you know, which sometimes goes unnoticed or gets taken granted for, but know that I try to be as grateful as I can be and remind myself as often as I can uh, the last year has been pretty immense I've had lots of new revelations about life and lots of new experiences okay I'm going to start walking back yeah I am okay um, lots of new experiences, lots of new connections, lots of new perspectives about life, lots of new emotions felt about new things which I didn't think that I would be so connected to. The biggest one, if you haven't guessed already, is veganism and the whole vegan movement which is happening in the world at the moment and what it stands for and what it is trying to achieve. And, some of the amazing people out there who are trying to change the world through education because at the end of the day that is the only way we can change the world I've always said that education is the key to change but with that becomes with that comes a big responsibility in educating people I don't want to say the right way, but approaching education in uh, the most empathetic way possible because in regards to veganism, you know, eating animal products is so normal, so normal for so many people and has been for so long. I ate meat and dairy for 20, 22 years of my life and didn't bat an eyelid. Sure, it crossed my mind. Fucking hell, this comes from animals. Sure, but like, you don't really, you don't really deep it properly, you know. Like, and this, I think, is maybe my message before I go away and learn anything to my amazing friends and my amazing family. Like, I love you all so much, and please don't take this from. Don't take this as me trying to be patronising or elitist or because that is the I'm not trying to feed into the stigma if anything I'm trying to remove the stigma that goes with what veganism stands for and it's not about it's not about you know subscribing to some random not random but like just some hippie movement which you know maybe has some hope for the future it's about embracing your innate compassion for for life because we all say we are compassionate beings and you know we value love and compassion and I've said over and over again this year that love is the most important thing in the world because without each other we are nothing but that doesn't mean we can we can't extend that to all life because we love animals and most people do and most people are against 
animal cruelty, rightly so because it's wrong. And there seems to be some moral friction, some, you know, some deep feeling that it's wrong when we see, you know, animals being abused and that's only normal is because we recognise that they have emotions and they suffer, they feel pain and like you know it's just about recognising that these farm animals have the exact same capacities if not higher like pigs are predicted to have higher emotional intelligence than dogs which means they can feel more complex range of emotions and they can feel deeper they connect deeper cows you know mourn for each other and the mothers moan and there's a proper word but you know let's just say like moan and, and, and pine is the word they pine for their their babies when they get taken away because again most people don't know or don't even think about the intricacies of where these foods come from like you know dairy comes from it's just an extension of the meat industry really because male cows get put to slaughter because they have no use apart from their their flesh and female cows get forcibly impregnated every year for probably about nine years and once they stop making enough milk and not seen as as a profit anymore they get sent to the exact same slaughterhouse for meat again and in that time they get their babies taken away from them they get mutilated and beaten and not looked after at all and you know then people will say well what about you know organic farms and you know ones where the f animals are looked after better well you know like red tractor approved farms and stuff like this and you have to forgive me because i'm not the most articulate person when it comes to these this 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 topic yet but i'm really trying and i'm doing a lot better than i i used to red tractor means nothing it's just a fallacy it's a lie it's a a label which makes the consumer feel easier or makes them feel you know less guilty and that's not the point of what I'm trying to say I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty because that's never gonna work you know and sure it might seem like a massive change but even if you're not doing it for the animals which I think you know the vast majority of people once they see it once they see videos of how animals are treated and stuff and we like, if there's going to be a victim to our food we have to take account we have to be responsible and take accountability and at least know where the food comes from you know like we can't just sit around and turn a blind eye because at the end of the day we kill 80 billion land animals every year including marine animals that goes up to somewhere between two and three trillion which is just an unfathomable number like you can't even comprehend how many animals that is and even without the all of marine life that's 80 billion sentient beings who value their own life in the same way that we do they want to live you know they want to they have a right to life they have an innate right to life because they're conscious and they they have they have the capacity to suffer and feel pain and when we put lock them away and put them in cages where they can't even turn around take their babies from them mutilate them clip their ears or clip off piglets tails or or i don't know just a number of the horrendous things we do to animals it's it's not okay and the best thing the best thing about it is it's a choice we have the power to make change in the world. There are so many injustices in this world. Right right now, I don't know a lot about it. I, I really should. 
but one of the biggest global human atrocities of, of, our, of the last probably 50 years being the Gaza-Israel genocide horrendous situation which I'm not going to go into because I don't know enough to articulate it properly all I know is that they're killing innocent babies and people if you don't think that's wrong then I don't know what to say but that kind of thing we don't have the power to change you know I've spoken to people about this and we don't have the power to change that kind of thing because unfortunately unless we go out there and try and save people you know we can't do anything and we don't have the power to apart from the power of protest but that can only go so far in regards to animal agriculture it's destroying our planet so if you don't do it for you or the animals do it for your children and their children because 91% of the Amazon is destroyed for animals to graze just let that you know think about that just to graze and farm them if we if animal agriculture wasn't a, th a thing we would free up an amount of land equivalent to the entirety of South America Australia China and Europe I think combined and there's so much food produced for the animals and if the animals weren't there we could just feed the people instead and like basically sell world hunger so when you learn about these things it just like it makes no sense I understand it's normal and has been for such a long time but goodness things have to change because how can we be compassionate people when there's so much violence in our food and that was my point is our choice we can make a difference just by choosing different foods in the shop because it's only it only exists because of supply and demand if we cut off the demand the supply will fall animals will stop being bred into existence for the sole purpose of being slaughtered for our food you know and it's so easy as well I'm gonna wrap this up in a minute but it's so easy for us to turn a blind eye because there's so much disconnect between where the food comes from and what we see on our plate but I would bet a lot of money that n most people I know would not have the will or the I guess lack of empathy to go out and you know unless in time in, ta in times of survival it's food justified but we don't need animal products to survive so I, I doubt that anyone I know would be able to kill an animal with their bare hands for the sole purpose of food you know we're not meant to sure we invented ways to kill animals so we could just survive in the past but that was a long 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 time ago the world has come a long way western culture is so vast and so intricate and we have so much choice now and we have so much power people say you vote with your money you know so I'm going to wrap this up because I will keep going on forever, but life is about to change big time. I'm so excited to learn more and be a better advocate for veganism because at the end of the day, that's one of the biggest things that I've ever felt passionate about, you know, because it's not about me, it's about the animals, it's about the planet, it's about your health, you know. Um, I try to be a voice for the voiceless because if they had a choice they would not walk into that sort of house and they would not choose to die so yeah I'm so happy to my friends and family I love you so much I might not see you for a while always be always be home so 
hopefully I'll be able to duck her more of my travels. I realise I'm quite a slow interrupted talker, so if you've managed this far then I appreciate you and I love you. Okay, I'm gonna end it now. I love you all. I'll see you soon.